What is up, everyone? Welcome to the Study Mortgage Show. Today's episode, we are going to dive into first-time home buyers and precisely the first-time home buyer process. It's it's something that's brought up on a super regular basis. Buying your first home and have no idea where to start, how the process is laid up, how much money do you have to pay, when do you have to pay it? So many questions. So in this episode. We're going to dive into the step-by-step process of buying your first home. And let's get after it right away. Let's dive right in. The first thing that a first-time home buyer should do is establish a budget. See, what most people do is they go on realtor.ca, they find a house they totally fall in love with, and then they decide that's their budget. When reality, what you should be doing is going the other way. I always like to use the term, do your math backwards. So start thinking about all the expenses you currently have, all the expenses you may have when you own a home, and then what do you have and what can you afford for a mortgage payment? And then that will be what your budget's based on because that's something you can actually live with and not put yourself in a real tough situation. So the first thing a first-time homebuyer should do is establish a budget based on their current and future expenses. The next step a first time home buyer should do is then reach out to a mortgage professional so they can start looking at what does that number mean for them in terms of a mortgage and subsequent purchase price. So when you sit down with a mortgage professional, the first thing you'll do is review the budget together. Then you'll start going over some potential um, issues that they see, they're going to review all your documentations to make sure that when you um, do apply, that everything's going to check out. Uh, A little side advice to you, if you have been pre-approved or talked to a mortgage person and they haven't looked at any documents and given you a number, I think that you should have a little bit of concern because how are they going to know if that's paid out? So what you need to do is make sure they review your documents and then finally, come up with a strategy for you and uh, a pre-approval. Hold the rate so that while you look for a home, you can make sure you have confidence in knowing that A, you know what you can afford and B, what it's going to mean in payment. So those are the things that are really important. Again, having a mortgage professional do a doc review for you, make sure they're all lined up and everything checks out and then have a strategy session where they can go over um, exactly how this mortgage is going to look for you, not only like immediately today, but how that's going to play out for you in the future. So that's step two. The next step is picking your realtor and having the fun part of house hunting. Now, like we every job, not all re- realtors are created equal. So the things that I know I feel are important when picking a real estate professional is number one, I like to have them to have a knowledge of the area. Uh, I think there's only so much you can do online. And so to have someone that knows the area you're looking at by a real well, I think is important. What are some of the future development plans? Are there some things in the area that maybe are less or very desirable? Having someone that intimately knows that's super important. The next thing I want to know is what's their negotiation expertise? Are they going to be able to negotiate the best deal for you? Because that's obviously super important. And then the next piece is connection. Do you like them? Do you, you know, do they see eye to eye? Do you guys each have an understanding of each other? I think that's super important. So when picking a realtor, I like to look for knowledge of the area, expertise in negotiations, and then that connection, that person you like with. So a lot of people don't know where to start and just staring at a sign is probably a terrible idea. So what I would suggest is ask around, who have your family and friends used and did they like them? Uh, Another great thing that some people don't do is ask another real estate professional, mortgage people, building inspector. You see, people like us, we talk to realtors all the time and we get a real good feel of who's good at what and things of that nature. So that's also a good source of who do we like and who would we have list our house and help us to buy. That's a great place to find the perfect realtor for you. So right now, we've established your budget. Uh, We've got you pre-approved and you can now buy with confidence knowing that the money is going to be there and you have the right real estate professional to move forward with this. So now you start house hunting. And I always tell our clients, 
have some fun with this. You're not going to see all perfect homes, um, but you know you have to look on the lighter side of how some things are done. And I've always really enjoyed looking for homes. I will say one of the biggest things that people don't realize is when you're looking for a home, the key is to really do a lot of communication with your realtor because in the realtor's eyes, all the things you like and all the things you don't like are very important so they can hone down just the places that suit your needs. So have some fun, look for your home and find the place that's gonna work for you. Uh, another tip that we'll give you is there's no such thing as a perfect home. It's just not, there's always gonna be a little something. So overlook the small things. What can you fix? What will a coat of paint do? And then what are the things you can't fix? And, and make sure you really hone on the things that are really important when you're trying to buy that home and don't get distracted by the small things. So now comes the real big part of this transaction and that's you found a home and now it's time to make an offer. So you'll have a discussion with your realtor about what the right price is for you guys when you wanna move, a bunch of little factors and they are gonna drop an offer for you that they will present to the seller. And that's when the negotiation comes. You make an offer for a price, they maybe agree, they counter. This is where that negotiation back and forth happens until you finally land on the price that you seller and buyer, you being the buyer, uh, agree on the closing dates and any of the other little things. I think when it comes to negotiating um, price on real estate, it's very important to think big picture. Too many people get caught in the small things. I think it would be really too bad if someone gets stuck on a $5,000 difference, $5, difference in purchase price for a home that when they sell in 5, 10, 15 years, they're going to make hundreds of thousands of dollars. So when you're looking for a home and you're doing negotiation, try not to get caught in the weeds. Take a step back and think of a big picture on how much of this is going to affect you, whether it's that five or $10,000 price difference, uh, give or take a date. Is it really something to lose maybe the perfect home over? So now you've done your negotiation, everyone's agreed on a price and a date. What you do now is enter into what we call a subject removal period. So your offer is going to typically say things like, I will buy this house for this price and on this date. However, I want that's based on doing a building inspection, making sure the lenders are good with the financing, making sure if it's a strata unit, we've looked at the minutes. There's just a couple things on this individual property that all the parties have to review and be comfortable with. Now, subject removals can vary from a couple days to a couple weeks. Every market's different. But in this subject removal time is where you have to get real firm that this is the place you want. So as a mortgage professional, this is where we have you pre-approved, but now we present the property to the lender. Do they like the property? Do they have any concerns? So this week, that subject removal period is generally that week where there's a little bit of stress because you're gonna really find out if you want the place. This is also the time where you first have to make a payment of some sort and who you pay at this point is the building inspector and potentially an appraiser. It's the first outlay of cash you will have to make when purchasing a home and the building inspector is going to be about 500 bucks, give or take, and they're going to check over the place and make sure it's a great investment and the key to know about the, the risk here is if you send out a building inspector and pay him his 500 bucks and the house is terrible, you don't get your 500 bucks back. But you also have the peace of mind that you didn't buy a place that could have been a, a real sinkhole for you. So that's the first time you're going to have to, quote unquote, write a check. Uh, a lender may also require an appraisal. And an appraisal is where uh, a professional certified appraiser gives us a market value. What is this place really worth in today's market? Some lenders require them, some don't. If one does and they require you to get one, it's usually about 300 bucks. And again, this is all done in subject removal week. Those two costs you do not recover if you don't get the place. So now we've gotten towards the end of subject removal week. You've had a building inspection, you feel comfortable about the home. You've uh, Your mortgage professional has presented the property to the lender. 
they're comfortable with it and you've read the minutes if there's minutes you've kind of done your full review your due diligence this is the home for you and you're comfortable moving forward so now what we do now is we remove the subjects or we remove those conditions because now we're satisfied with them and we have you're going to enter into a firm legally binding contract to purchase that home at this point you will be required to make a deposit uh, it all varies depending on the market, depends on the value of the place, all sorts of things. But what that deposit is for is it goes into the trust account of the realtors to make sure that you close on the contract. It's legally binding and you're obligated to. So just to make sure there's a non-refundable deposit that sits in the real estate agent's trust account. And if you do not complete, the seller gets it. Now, assume, that doesn't happen very often, and assuming you do complete the transaction, it's important to note that you, that deposit just makes up part of your down payment. So if you're looking at a home, and let's just say for all intents and purposes, you're gonna put down $50,000, let's say the real depo estate deposit was $10,000. What that means is you pay $10,000 on the subject removal date, and then down the road, a couple of days before you move in, and you present the rest of your down payment, all you bring is 40, and those two will total the $50,000 that you're doing for a down payment. But that is the next point. This deposit check is the next point where you have to write a check and outlay some cash. So that, to be honest with you, once you're done that, that is the most stressful part. Now you can feel great. You've found a home that you love. You've got a great firm binding offer. No one can take it away from you. You've talked to all the parties, the mortgage people, the building inspector, you feel good about your investment, and now it's just the waiting period. We, at this point, again, it's negotiable how long this takes, but now you're waiting for your closing date and to complete the transaction. Here is probably the biggest piece of advice I can give anybody. If you have made an offer and you have removed subjects and you're waiting for your closing date, do not buy anything major. Don't put anything on your credit cards. Don't apply for new credit cards. Don't buy a car. Don't do anything that's going to change the financial picture of where you were when you first made the offer. Because at the time, if you come up to your closing date and you have a much higher credit card balance, if you've taken out a brand new line of credit, if now you have a car payment because you got a car, the lender can pull the financing. It's very important that the picture that you painted for the lender when you remove subjects is the same picture you have when you close. Extremely important. You just need to, if you need to make a major purchase, you need to hang tight until after that's done. So the probably two bigger things that you'll actually take care of while you're waiting for your closing date, number one is that's where you can start lining up your insurance, your house insurance. So that's taken care of once you move in. And then the last piece, and this is kind of the, the last legal piece in the puzzle for you, is you're going to meet with a lawyer or a notary to take care of some final uh, ends to the completion of this transaction. That meeting will happen three to five days before your closing date. The purpose of a lawyer or a notary in the case of real estate is a couple of things. Number one, they're gonna register the title in your name, take the old owner off and make sure that title is registered properly. The next thing they're gonna do is they're going to make sure that they register the mortgage that you've gone to title. That's the more, the property is, is the lender security. So they make sure they tie that there. And then finally, they take care of the money. They make sure they get your down payment, they get your mortgage money, they send that to the seller. They take care of all of the organizing of the money for you. And then finally, they complete the purchase, the transaction. They're the ones that will register that home at land title in your name on the closing date and make that home officially yours. So now you've met with the lawyer, that's all taken care of. It's on the closing date or the completion date. The lawyer will register title in your name. That home becomes yours. So the final, the second step, the second final step in this transaction for you is the possession date. And this is a fun one because this is the day the realtor gets the keys for you, hands them off to you, and you can start moving into your new home. So now you've completed all the legal side of acquiring your new home. The home's yours. You have the keys. 
there's the last step, and that's the housewarming party. That's when you have a good time. You get to show off what you bought, but that is the step-by-step -step process on how to purchase your first home. I hope that's helpful for you. As always, if you have any questions, we are here to help. This is Jason Suddy with Suddy Mortgage. Your story starts here.